Hey, this is Aaron with Legion Wargaming and Hobby, and today I'm painting the Minotaur Abomination boss from Simon's Zombicide Black Plague. This will be a small multipot tutorial beginning with the skin. Hope you enjoy. For this first pot, I'll be doing a one to one mix of Xandri Dust and Bugman's Glow. This is diluted down with a medium. Xandri Dust is our base color. I primed the model in Army Painter Chaos Red and did a zenithal highlight with Xandri Dust to give the model a warm undertone. I'll be applying our Xandri Bugman mix to all the sores, veins, pustules, and pimples, as well as the tears in the skin to give the feeling of rashes and raw flesh due to plague-ridden transformation. With the medium, it gives the mix a semi-translucence and brings up the warmth of the chaos red underneath the Xandri Dust Zenithal Highlight. I'll also be adding this warm tone to the inner ears, mouth, and tongue. Uh, this will help us in the next tutorial when we tackle the rest of those details. This model also has a broken horn on one side. Uh, there's some sinewy nerve part inside of it. We'll also give that a touch of that paint. We'll also be adding this color around the tops of the hooves and the bases of the horns. There seems to be horrible infection setting in in those areas. So we want that to look like it's inflamed and starting to burst at the seams almost. I also add this color all over the left arm as well as the left arm's hand. That's where it seems like the infection has spread and transformed the most. So we want that area to look as red and inflamed and infected as possible. If you're painting along with me for this model, uh, when you're putting this mix down on the pustules and wounds and everything, it's all right to kind of blotch it and spread it a little bit. You don't necessarily have to be neat because when we apply our washes later on, it'll all tie it together and further give that feel of infection and disease and just nastiness spreading all over this guy's uh, skin. Because of the way that we diluted it with the medium, like I explained a little bit earlier, it gives it a translucent feel almost. So it still ties in very well with the base coat skin color because of the addition of the Xandri dust with the Bugman's Glow. Finishing up this step, we'll start to move into the next colors. Uh, we'll be using a two to one mix of Phalanx Yellow and Bugman's Glow. Again, diluted down with medium. This will be used for any open wounds on the model, just to add some small variety to the skin. Uh, this particular model only has a few small open wounds, but they're spread out enough across the model to give a nice seeping plague look. Uh, I add a little bit of this to the back of the throat as well, showing how deep this infection is. Uh, moving forward from here, I'll be cheating and painting all the rest of the steps with washes. They'll basically be doing all the work for us without the need to really highlight as I want to keep this model a little bit grim and dark to fit with the feel of Zombicide Black Blade. For this first wash, I will be using a one-to-one -one mix of Seraphim Cephia and a medium all over the skin to unify our color so far and further bring out that warmth. It's very important not to let this pool heavily, so make sure you're constantly pushing it around and spreading it out evenly in all the recesses. Instead of going with a cold and dead look, I decided for a more transformative warmth of new life feel. Uh, the zombie bite infected this minotaur and it's actively thriving and transforming him into something even more deadly. The virus may easily overwhelm lesser beings, but for these greater mythical monsters, it only enhances their physicality, carnage, and cunning. As you can see, I'm just pushing it around the model, making sure it's getting deep in the recesses. And when it's deep in the recesses, I'm just making sure, like I said, it's not pooling. 
you don't want heavy pooling because it leaves horrible stains when it dries. You want to try to get it as even as possible so that it dries in a realistic manner. Realism is always the way that I strive for when I paint. For the second wash, I'll be using Reiklin Flesh Aid, and that's mixed two pots medium and one pot Reiklin. We want this all of a wash to be subtle, just to continue to bring up the warmth of the skin. Reiklin can be very overpowering and strong, so I have to dilute it a little bit more than usual with the medium. Again, try not to let this pool up heavily. Keep it spread and even in the recesses. Throughout the video, you'll see me constantly doing this. I add this wash also to the throat and the mouth, just to bring up the warmth of the paler base color. This next stage is to bring out the wounds we painted with the yellow mix earlier and to add definition and variety to the plague skin. I just pick random areas of the skin with it. It's a two to one mix of Waywatcher Green and Medium. Now Waywatcher Green is actually a discontinued glaze paint by Games Workshop. Obviously hard to get if you don't own it already. So another good substitute would be Plague Bearer Flesh by Games Workshop. Both are very strong colors, so use them sparingly like I did in the video. Now, as you can see in the video, I'm not only just applying it to the open wounds, I'm blotching it on the skin as well. Since this uh, glaze is very strong, you're going to see that it's going to add that greenish tint to the random areas that I'm choosing along the skin as well. Like I said earlier, this is just to add a little bit of uh, variety to the model, just to break up uh, the warm tones a little bit and to add in different areas of infection. I was trying to go for a seeping green toxic sickness inside this minotaur's flesh this is what's causing him to mutate and transform slowly and brutally finishing up the final wounds on the top of the head the back and the legs will stop moving into our final wash stage for the skin uh, it's what i like to call the infection stage I'll be using a 3 to 1 mix of Garoberg Crimson and Medium. I'll be adding this to all the pustules and pimples as well as the veins to bring out the soreness and to give everything a reddish bruised infected look. This wash is best put deep in the recesses to make all the infected areas really pop, no pun intended. The top of the head and the hooves also get this treatment. I put this around the spikes, the horns, and the fingernail bases as well, the further the infection feel. I also add this to the hand creases and the knuckles on the offhand to add a little bit of warmth. I also add it to the eyes, the brow line, the face, and the nostrils. Lastly, I add this to the mouth tongue, gums, to add a little bit of extra definition. This also gets put around the base of the hooves because there is terrible infection happening down that way too. This step is going to bring a lot of attention to the infection on the skin, uh, the pustules, and a lot of the really bad, disgusting breaks and tears in the flesh. This is actually an old GW technique to bring up the details on Nurgle models. For the final painting stage, we use a one-to-one -one mix of Ungor Flesh and Medium. This is to randomly pick and highlight some of the pustules around the skin to really give them a ready-to-pop glow. As I'm painting these, I'm also going back in with Caraburg Crimson on some pustules and pimples that didn't get enough to bring out that infection more. As you can see, the milky yellow of the Ungor flesh really brings out the disgusting factor of these pustules. It's really important with this stage to get a solid coat just to bring out that ready to pop pimple feel. Now where I chose not to highlight the skin any further, if you prefer, you could actually do this. 
and it's easily done by reapplying the base colors with three pots medium to whatever your base mix is. So for example, the one-to-one -one Zandri to Bugman, you just add three pots medium to that to give it a translucent feel and then go over any definitions you want to brighten the skin back up after the wash stages. Doing the wash method with minimal highlights just really gets this model on the table faster in my opinion. And it just seems like it's a little bit easier for a newer painter to follow. If you're a veteran painter, you may not care for this very much. Uh, with bigger models like this, some people feel the need to go into excessive detail to really showcase them. I think the washes do a really good job on their own, adding, you know, the definition to the details, so I really don't need to go too crazy. Finishing off the last pus tools towards the top of the head, that about wraps up the skin for this model. I appreciate those who hung out and watched. Hope you enjoyed it and learned a thing or two from it. In the next pot, we'll tackle the remaining details and finish them off. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please like, comment, subscribe. Let me know at the bottom. Again, uh, this is Aaron with Legion Wargaming and Hobby, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for stopping by.